Hello again. In this video we're going to start the process of being able to die, get a score, get game over and restart the game. So we'll, in this one we're just going to look at being able to die and tracking the score. We won't actually restart the game just yet because I want to do something a bit different with that. So for now we need to die. Let's jump to the level class and I'm going to use this handy little place that we made that we've commented in where we handle the player. And I want to treat the player the same way we do with the ships where the level is responsible for updating the player instead of the turret class. So I'm going to come along to the turret class, go up to the constructor and I'm going to remove these lines that make it responsible for updating itself. I'm going to delete that event listener and while I'm here actually I'm going to give it some help. So make a variable. I'll keep it public for now so we can use it. Public for our health. Make it a number. Because eventually your, your health will be able to go down in like 0 0.01 and so on because you'll have defence that reduces the damage you take. We don't have that yet but we might as well be ready for it. Set the health in the constructor. Set it to 10. Find the update function. We now remove this because it's no longer processing an event. We'll get rid of that and just neaten that bit up by making it public. Anything else to change? We don't need these comments anymore, do we? Let's get rid of them. No, just the two that we don't need. Um, okay, save that. So now we need to tell the level to update the player. Before we can do that we actually need a reference to the player because at the moment it's not named, it's not spawned using code so we don't have it stored in a variable and if we look at the FLA the turret isn't named, we can't click on it and see an instance name. I'm actually on the level here so I need to double click, go into my level, select the turret and give it an instance name. So I'm going to call it the player. Just make sure you're naming the turret. So you, you go to your library, make sure you're working inside the level, select the turret and in the properties give it the instance name the player. Save that. And now in the level class I can access the player by typing the instance name. So I can do the player dot update. Save it, just check that it works. Yep, seems fine. So the level is now responsible for the player. Next step is to be able to die. So we'll come down to the do ships function where all the, the ships are updated. And just before we remove the ship if it's dead, we'll we'll check to see if the ship's touching the player. So comment this. If the ship collides with the player if sh dot hit test object now I keep saying we're going to change the way we do the hit tests and we will do, we're going to use circular collision instead of the, the uh, rectangular collision by default but we haven't done that yet so I will get to it sh dot hit test object the player so if the ship collides with the player, first we need to hurt the player. So we do the player dot health minus minus. For now, we'll change that later on. And let's kill the ship so the same ship doesn't continually hit the turret. sh.health equals zero. Just check that it works by uh, yeah, so we can see I'm not firing there, but the ships are dying when they touch the turret. Now, in my opinion, those explosions are far too big. So I'm just going to edit them while I'm here. Lasts for five frames, spawns every one frame. That's the blast radius, isn't it? So if we drop that to 20 and maybe put the explosion sizes between 5 and 20. Check that. They're a bit more subtle, they're still a bit too spread that 20 down, 
to 10, put that 20 down to 10. Mm, probably too small now, but not to worry. Let's put that last 10 back up to 15. Okay, so the ships are dying when they hit the player, but we need the player to die when he's run out of health. So, just after we update the player, we can check to see if he's dead. We could do it inside the turret, I suppose. Uh, either my place would work for what we're after. I'm just going to, to do it here, so check to see if the player is dead. So we'll do if the player dot health is less than or equal to zero, trace you died. You suck, you died. Save it, test it, and just keep an eye out here. When we get hit ten times it should trace that we died. And you'll notice it's doing it lots of times. So we're actually dying once a frame for a lot of frames there. Which isn't ideal. That's not what we want. So we can have a flag. We'll have a, a variable up at the top here. We'll keep a private variable bar and we'll call it game over. And we'll make it a boolean, so it's either true or false. In the constructor, we'll set it to false, so game over equals false. Comment that. And now, when we die, if we set game over to true, and only update the player from beeping. Only run this code if the game isn't over. So if open brackets game over equals equals false. Now what we could do instead of using equals equals false, we can delete that and just put an exclamation mark at the front of game over. So that says if not game over. Just going to indent this and close the if. Save it and test it. We should only get the you died message once now, hopefully. Yes, so and I can no longer move the player because we're not updating him anymore. I can't fire. That's good. So that worked. We're still spawning ships though. We we shouldn't do that, so I'm going to cut the spawn ship a bit, just chop that. Another benefit of having refactored this is that it's only a line to cut instead of a big wedge. And I'm only going to spawn ships if the game's not over. We still want the bullets and the ships to update when we're dead, so I'm going to leave them outside of the if. Now when we die, see we're dead, can't, can't move or fire, but the ships are no longer spawning. And that's good. We don't want this massive army to continue wasting its efforts on us once we're dead, so we're not going to spawn any more ships. What I also want to happen is a nice big explosion when we're dead. So I'm going to copy the explosion from down here. Copy that, and I'm going to paste that under here. I'm also going to delete the trace, replace it with a comment saying set game over to true. Spawn an explosion, let's make this one bigger. We'll make it last for 30 frames, we'll give it a blast radius of 60, and we'll make the explosions quite big. and I'm going to spawn more of them, so I'm going to drop that down. So I want to spawn an explosion every 0.3 frames. Let's just see how that goes. Ooh. Sorry, uh, that needs to be the player, not SH. So we're positioning this new explosion chain on top of the player. And if we die now, we get a nice 
big explosion. It didn't last as long as I wanted and it wasn't as big as I wanted to be honest. So I'm going to make it last for 60 frames and I'm going to make the explosion bigger. <clears throat> Dead. Nice big explosion. No mistake in that one. Yep, fairly happy with that. Next bit, this video is probably going to be quite short in comparison to some recent ones. I'm just going to keep track of score. So in the level, I'm going to have a private variable for score. And that can be, for now, it can be an int. We might change it later on. Set it to zero in the constructor. And every time a ship dies, we'll get one point for now. So when this, this ship here, if it's dead, we'll gain a point. So score plus plus means we get one point. And let's just check it's working. If we trace score, we'll get spammed by this. Test it. Fire. And you can see that we still get points when the ships hit us. Now, I don't really mind that so much. How many points did I score there? 38 points before I died. Cracking. I'm not going to trace that out. What I am going to do though, I'm going to go to the FLA. I'm going to go inside the level. And just for now, I'm going to add a dynamic text field. So I'm going to draw a text field at the bottom of the level. Make sure it's using project font, put the font size down, I don't know, 18. Make it dynamic text and center it, yeah. Position that somewhere, so that's near the bottom. Give it an instance name, I'm going to call it output. So I've got a dynamic text field called output. So now in my level class, when I update, here we've got update scores, haven't we? What we can do is put output.text equals score plus score. So we'll pass the score into that text field. That's <coughs> Sorry, that's something stuck in my throat. Test that. You can see that as we kill stuff now, we're getting a score display at the bottom. <coughs> so that's working. I think I'll, I'll leave it there for this video. In the next one, we're going to look at dispatching events. So we're actually going to cause our own events to make various things happen. It's a trick I used for the, the buffs and so on in the original game where if a ship hit you, you would retaliate by firing lots of bullets and that responds to an event. But in this particular case, I'm going to throw an event when it's game over so that the main FLA can react to it and go to a game over screen to display your score. So we'll take a look at that in the next video. I'll see you then.